Hello, group. Jeff here. So about three, two or three weeks ago, uh, someone asked what we were doing during our lockdown. And uh, I have a couple projects that are astronomy related that I can show. Uh, one is incomplete, the other is finished. Uh, we'll start with the incomplete one. This is the open uh, astro tracker. And the open astro tracker is basically this for DSLR cameras. Or, and what I'm going to do is I'm using uh, the uh, T2 to Canon lens adapter so that I can use some melon cam cameras if I want, or I can use a DSLR with the DSLR lenses. So let me zoom in and uh, can kind of show you what's going on here. Let me center up a little bit better. Okay, so there's the camera adapter sitting on my plate right here. And uh, that is a, a 3D printed piece. Then the adapter goes up to these bearing holders here. Then there's the wheel. That's a 3D printed part. I have one, two, three pieces for this ring were 3D printed. The two bearing holders were printed. The motor mount was printed. This uh, let me just lift it up a little bit. These two pieces here were 3D printed. This motor mount was printed. On the back side, we have this, 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 and this were 3D printed. This was 3D printed. And on the base, this piece and this piece were printed. So if you ever decide to use or do this project, there's some things that you want to uh, be aware of. Um, I've got big build plates, 300, uh, 300 millimeter, so I can print these bigger pieces without any problem. If you have a smaller build plate, then you have to uh, print using the smaller pieces. The other thing is that they have parts specific to your latitude. So in my case, uh, I'm at 42.7. I had to get the 40, uh, 40 degree latitude parts, which are this, this, this tower, and um, a couple other pieces, which I can't remember off the top of my head. And that get you close within 2.73 degrees we'll call it so that when you want to point at Polaris you would use these bolts these two and this one to get you pointing at Polaris and then uh, for your left and right you just move the you move it like like that for left and right for your pointing and uh, with these stepper motors this one and this one, you will be able to track if you get good polar alignment. I would say, depending on how wide you are, up to five minutes with this thing, which is like amazing. More than, I don't think I would ever be taking a five minute shot, but in case you did, uh, for some deep sky stuff, you could do it with this. The other nice thing is it uses an Arduino for its main controller uh, to drive the steppers and one of the parts I'm waiting for are the uh, stepper driver motors or drivers for the motors. And they come from China and China, <laughs> they're only like $3 parts. And uh, because they're so cheap, they're waiting for a bigger shipment to ship all their stuff at once. So I'm kind of left hanging here. I can't finish this until I get those stepper motor drivers. But uh, there are ASCOM drivers for this thing. And with the ASCOM drivers, 
you can then use something like Stellarium to uh, point. And that, you couldn't ask for something more. <laughs> it's, such a, it's a cool project. I'll show you guys how I make out once I get uh, further along. And I can actually show you it running. But it will only it will run off of five volts, no more, no less, which is pretty cool. Now the next project is this guy, and this guy is going to allow me to take everything you see here, the mount, the weights, my heaters, my electronics, two cameras, three cameras, my star sense, everything, out as one complete unit to my spot on the driveway. Where before, I used to have to take the mount with no weights, my OTA and the weights on this cart over here, my cameras were up, always put away. Um, that was at least four trips for me. And it took eh, anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes just to set this guy up. Then I have the Raza back there. I don't know if you can see it. And that with uh, my uh, redneck dolly, I could take that out as one trip. So uh, I was at Anthony's at AMD, or I'm sorry, ADM, and he has a beautiful Takahisha set up with two 109, Takahishi 109s on a Paramount mount. And he used to have to take the mount out, then the uh, two Takahishis and all his electronics and then he had to put a table right next to it and I told him I said you should get yourself a Harbor Freight lift and he got the 500 pound one because his rig isn't quite as heavy as this one and I think in hindsight he probably should have gone with this guy because it's got bigger wheels it's got a wider stance and it's a little bit deeper, and it handles the, uh, the weight, the top-heavy uh, weight, much better than, than uh, the smaller one does. Because that has, I think it's got three-inch wheels, where this has got four. And uh, the other nice thing is that because of the way I built this, when I lift, it just lifts a little on the spreader. The center of the spreader is a little bit lower than the uh, spreader attachment points on the legs. And what that does is it acts like a shock absorber. And uh, there are, it's hardly any shock up here, which is great. So now I can leave my cameras attached, which means I can actually make flats. And because I can make flats, I can use those flats and never have to worry unless my optics get dirty. Uh, I have a filter slider. So I don't have to screw around with anything anymore. It will take me uh, two trips because I'll have, uh, that's now my computer cart. One for this, one for that, plug everything in, and I can start tracking on stuff or pointing at stuff in blue sky, which is huge when the planets are out, because I'll always see them before, I'll see them in this before I can see them with this. And if I don't get them within the field of view of these two cameras or my guide scope, I have the pointing uh, scope or spotting scope. And uh, nine times out of 10, if it's not in any of these, I can always find it with uh, the spotting scope. So let me show you how this works. I'll just pretend like I hauled it out to the driveway and I will just drop it like so. I'll pull it out, plug it in, and I'm ready. Let me show you how I made it. I have all scrap wood. This is stuff that uh, I just sort of keep around for oddball projects like this. So I have a piece of wood here, a stop, a piece of wood here, a stop, a piece of plywood, which was from my uh, solar panels, the crates. 
and then I have three uh, three fairly stiff uh, spreader attachment points. And because I left the rubber mat on, once the weight is applied to this, it will never go this way or this way. So it's not going to slip off. I have uh, 3D printed parts here. And what that does is it aligns, it keeps the uh, spreader mounts within these. So they won't slip off uh, on the, my bumpy driveway. So when I'm ready to go, I just wheel her in like so. A couple pumps on the lift. Whoops, I'm a little off on my, my eyeball. That's better. This is off a little so I can just kick it over. That looks good. And away I go. So here's a bump here. You can see that the, the top of the scope is hardly hardly moving at all and it's not it's it doesn't get jarred, which is huge. So those are the two projects I worked on. I hope you got some uh, interesting ideas for little projects you can do. Uh, this mount with the coupon, I had a 25% coupon. I think this was like 225, which actually was cheaper than the mount that I made out of hardwood uh, five years ago. I think the, just the wood, the hardwood for that cart was uh, $175. And that does not, uh, that didn't include my time. I just enjoy doing stuff like that. So uh, my total investment in, it, in this is just the cart. And uh, I, I wouldn't change a thing. This has just made my life so much easier for setup and takedown. Uh, it's almost like being in an OBS where you guys have to slide stuff around to open it up. I'm pretty much doing the same thing. I'm just dragging stuff out to the driveway and boom, I'm ready to go. Uh, when it comes, if it looks like my polar alignment is, is uh, off more than a couple degrees, what I will do is then uh, hook up the pole master when it gets dark enough and uh, just get the, the the polar alignment zeroed back in. And because I'm using uh, Celestron's uh, CPWI software, uh, I can just use the, on a last alignment, pick a star, which syncs that whole uh, sky chart up to my mount. And I have hardly missed a target at all this year with this uh, brand new CG, or uh, what is this, the CGXL? Yeah, I keep getting my initials mixed up. Yep, CGXL. So that's all I got for you. If you have any questions, you know where I live. And we'll see you in the group.